In this episode, I'm going to cover advertising with AdMob using Flutter. I'll start off by configuring AdMob, and then I'll display a banner ad and cover displaying an interstitial ad, and then I'll talk about how to use the app builder to configure a margin at the bottom so my ad doesn't stack over functional behavior. So to get started, I'm going to go to my IDE, and in this case, I'm using Android Studio. Okay, so to get started, I'm using a basic application with a list view and a floating action button. So what I wanted to show is that it's the ad at the bottom here and what will happen when I display the ad. Okay, and I'll cover how to get there. Okay, what I wanna do first is install Flutter. And how would I do that? So I'm gonna to go to pubsec.yaml and I need to add the dependency here first. So how do I do that? So I'm gonna to go to the readme and I've already dialed it up and it's in pub.dartlang.org and I'll leave a link to this uh, link here in the video description below. What I have dialed up is Firebase with AdMob. And there's another way to get here. And if you go to the Flutter plugins, and it, that is github.com forward slash Flutter forward slash plugins, and you scroll down and you can find Firebase with AdMob, and you can click on this pub link right here and go to the same exact place. So those are the two places I like to come to get to how I configure the Firebase with AdMob. Okay, so what I wanna do is go to the installing tab and I'm gonna copy this uh, dependency. I'm gonna go to the IDE and paste it in. And I'm gonna paste it in. Okay, so make sure it's indentated, has the correct indentation there. And then I'm gonna remove the quotes in this case. I'm gonna, it doesn't need the quotes. And I'm going to save it to give Android Studio a kick. And then I'll press on packages.git. And I just press Command S to save a little bit faster. Okay, so now that it's fetched the packages, I'm going to go to main.dart and I'm going to go scroll to the bottom and I'm going to copy the import so I can import the library. And I'm going to go to the top and paste in the import. Okay, so I haven't used the library yet. So how would I do that? I'm going to go back to the README here in the guide and scroll down. The very first thing I wanna do is copy this right here and initialize my Firebase application. And where would I do that? So I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna go back to my application and where would I do that? Well, I don't have a good spot to do that. So what I wanna do is change the way my app is constructed. Instead of a stateless widget, I'm gonna change it to a stateful widget. Okay, so how would I do that? So I got a space here. I'm going to add a space. And what I want to do is I'm going to use a live template to create a stateful widget. And I'm going to change out my app. So I'm going to go stateful, S-T-F-U-L. And then I'm going to press on enter because that brings up the auto assist or live template for creating the boilerplate here. And press on enter. And I'm going to name it my sandbox app. You can name it whatever your application is doing, maybe for based on the behavior. And then press enter to finish that boilerplate. Okay, so what I want to do is change. I want to remove the return from the stateless and paste it into the stateful. And what does that buy me? Well, let me just remove this first and I'll show you what that buys me. Okay, I got to replace this up here because now I'm calling the sandbox app and instead of my app. Okay, so what that buys me is basically an init state where I can override the application behavior when it initializes. So I'm going to override that. So I'm going to go init state autocomplete and there it is. This is where I'm going to put my initialization for firebase.admom. Now there's more than one way of course to do this. It's just one of the what I'm showing you here is an option of one of the ways to do that. So I'm going to paste it in. Okay, so so I need to get my app ID. How do I get that app ID? Well, I'm not going to cover that specifically in this episode. I'll give you the instructions on how to do that. You go to the admob site and you create a you create a project and then you create an ad, ad unit and that ad unit will give you the app ID or you can go into settings and I think you can get it as well. So what I'll do is I'll copy and paste in what I created for my sandbox project and it's going to be a constant that's a string and I'm going to paste it as a top level member here and it's going to define app ID as going to be this is my sandbox at, uh, project ID here for in my ad mob dash. Okay so that that gets me initialized. Well, now how do I display my ads? Well, I'm going to go back to the guide and simply copy this content. This is a quick way to get started and see what's going on. And that's because, because the ad unit IDs are using test IDs. And those test IDs were retrieved from this list at the end 
at the end of these links here. And I won't cover that in great detail, but that's that's a great place to start. There's a video there too to watch and understand that in greater detail. So I'm gonna copy this. This is all I need to get going. And I'm gonna put this at the top of my app application so they will be top level members of my application so I can reference them pretty much anywhere they're not private yet so I could reference them in any library so if I had more than one page I could set the target when the page is loaded and then load the app and then render it and what does that mean okay how do I construct it and show it well I'm gonna go down to the build context here and show my ad so how would I do that so I'm gonna go back to the readme and select on my banner. I wanna display my banner. Oh, by the way here, it just makes a note. Typically this happens well before the ad is shown. And so you can call this earlier on in the process before the page is loaded or rendered. And then when the page goes to render, you could show it. So you could separate those two. In this case, it, the calls are chained together. And so it immediately loads and shows in, in this call. So I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go back to my page and then I'm gonna go down. And in this case, I wanna show how I would do it in my home page. I'm gonna move it, of course, in, into a different area that makes a little bit more sense here in a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna paste it here. Okay, so now if my home page is loaded, and rendered and, and built here, it will call my banner, it will load it, and then it will say, okay, I'm gonna show it. Well, there's probably some processing behavior in the ad, so it may be delayed in a sense, so I might wanna load it typically before my page is loaded. So I'll cover that in a little bit more detail on options for that. Okay, so the anchor offset sets how far off the bottom of the page it's gonna be um, anchor, or from the anchor or the bottom, and this tells me where it's gonna be at. Okay, let me scroll up. There's one more important note I forgot to cover yet. And so in the targeting info, I could specify keywords that makes my ad relevant to my audience. And I'm not gonna cover this in great detail. I just wanna cover it briefly here. AdMob does a better job at showing this, how to do this in the guides. And then I could give it a content URL for grabbing content. So it could base the ad on the behavior. And then there's some other attributes here that you can set in the targeting info to make it more relevant. And you can see they're not constants, so I could change this as my application and depending on what page I'm on or view I'm in, and I could change it to make it more relevant to that, to the end user. Okay, so then I have, I give the targeting info to the My Banner and so the banner ad is constructed with that targeting info. In this case, there's, I give it, I want the smart banner size. So what is smart banner? I'm gonna command click on that. The smart banner size is unique in that it's width and height values are here are not used. So the runtime figures that out. And so that's, that's nifty. Well, there's some other options here. There's leaderboard, full banner, medium rectangle, large banner and banner and such and those can be used to display different sizes and i'll show you i'm going to show how to use a media query to figure out if we're in landscape and portrait mode in a second but we could also use that to discover which ad size we want to show okay so i'm going to go back to main and okay so i've constructed it with smart banner and then this ad unit is like i said before is using a test ad unit id well you once you create your ad unit in the in the dash, the ad mob dash, you can come back and replace this. But this is a quick way to get going. And by the way, um, the test devices, Android emulators are considered test devices by default. You don't really have to switch here from banner ad test ad unit ID to, to a real ID. But anyways, I'm not gonna cover all those caveats in the behavior in this episode. I just wanna give, enough to show you how to get booted up and going quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down and okay, so we have it wired up. So I'm gonna restart my application. If I haven't, I, okay, it's already stopped. This, once you wire in AdMob, go ahead and restart your application so it wires up the native platform for this dependency. It takes a little bit more than just reloading from the beginning or hot reload. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this up and So excellent, the ad booted up and it rendered and I can see the ad is 60 pixels off from the bottom. Well, I'm gonna move that down. Let me just move that, I'm gonna set it to zero and then I'm gonna go ahead and run from the beginning. Okay, so it did change 
locations. Well, it, it kept the stack there, so I need to reload my application. I'm going to restart it from the beginning, beginning down here. Re rerun the application. So see how this ad is at the bottom? It stacks over my functional behavior. Well, I know from the ad mob policy, this is not a good behavior to do. So what I want to do is add a margin at the bottom to say, okay, bring my functional behavior up and consider that there's 50 pixels uh, height used for an ad. So how would I do that? Well, I can use the app material app builder argument to set that. So let me just type that in over here on the right. So I'll go to the material app. And then I'm going to add the builder argument. And what will I give it for the builder? So I'm going to command click and look at the builder. It's a transitional builder. So what type is that? So it looks like it's a type def, which it's giving me a function signature here to follow. And what I want to do is copy that. I'll just copy the, the parameters and take it back to main. And I'm going to do an inline function with those parameters and finish the body. So what I want to do is return the child because that's what it's basically providing me the child. And now I could wrap this child in some padding, but let me just verify it works. So I'm going to hit run from the beginning again and I debug from the beginning up here. And okay, so there it is. Okay, so it's working just fine. So now I want to do is add some padding. So I'll go new padding. So I'm going to wrap it here and the padding is going to be a const and let's say edge insets only, uh, let's say only, and I'm going to go bottom is going to be 50 pixels and I'll put some commas here to do for formatting, auto format there, uh, command option L, and then I'm just going to reload it just to verify it works. Okay, so it did work. What I forgot here is to provide it with a child. So basically I need to provide a child and say the child is going to be the child that's provided in the transitional builder there. So I'm going to reload the application. And there I go. So the application works. It pushed up the bottom by 50 pixels because I've added some padding. So that's great. So now that I don't have some overlapping there, I think this should be following the policy. That said, I want to provide a disclaimer. Read the ad mob policies. Don't consider what I said as the truth to the ad mob policy there. Okay, so to just keep that in mind, you'll have to read and follow the instructions on your own. Okay, so now that I have it, what if I wanted to switch to portrait mode or landscape mode? And I in landscape mode, I don't want all this real estate used up. I want to stack it instead. So how would I do that? How would I change it so that when I'm in landscape, it stacks instead of has a margin. Well, I could use a media query to do that. So let me just start that out. And before I get there, what I could do is basically now I could say, instead of showing my ad in my page, I could say I can cut that out and I can move it up to here. And what I could do is load and show it in inside of the builder. So now that it's in, in the builder, I don't have to display it and can do any construction in any of the child page widgets in my application. It's all done right in the material application. Now, this is not the only way to do it. There's other ways you could you could call your references here to my banner and construct it. You could call it in the page because maybe you want it to a little bit more focused on on what you're doing for that page. And now I don't have any control. Once the ad is shown, there's some ad engine logic that happen. So I, I can't provide all those caveats in this episode. Okay, so now that I have it constructed, what I want to do is call a media query. So I'll construct a media query here. And that's going to be, uh, let me name it media query. I'm going to work it backwards a little. And then I'll say a call media query of this context. And now that I have a media query reference, I'm going to go double. Let me define my padding uh, bottom variable, declare it as default by at 50 pixels. So then I can say padding bottom is going to be 50 pixels. And then let's say if uh, media query is um, orientation is, is equal to orientation of landscape, then I'm going to say that the padding at the bottom is going to be zero pixels. Okay, so that was pretty easy. And what do I have here is it looks like a mistake, not a mistake. It looks like a mistake, but what happens here is now that it's a dynamic variable, I need to make this dynamic. It can't be a compile time constant, so I'm just going to instantiate that with new. Okay, so I'll uh, do a little auto formatting there. Okay, we're all up to date, and then what I can do is run this from the beginning just to verify everything is working, and then I'll switch to landscape over here. 
Okay, so now that I'm ready, I'm gonna switch to landscape and see if it stacks. Oh, excellent, it does stack. And by the way, the black margins here on the ad tend to disappear from, I, from what I've noticed based on these smart ads that um, are provided through AdMob. Uh, okay, so if I move back, okay, let me move back. Okay, so yeah, a lot of times the ads take up the full amount of space. In this case, this test ad is basically providing a smaller ad. Okay, so now that I can see that media query is then changes my margin based on whether it's in landscape or portrait mode. So that's fantastic. And so this builder, this transitional builder right here that is providing the material scaffolding is quite nice to be able to call and load my, my ad here. In this case, it's a generic system. And I just simply run it through a media query and then wrap the child widget that is provided in the transitional widget there and, and give it some padding. Okay, so basically that covers showing my banner. How about I show an interstitial ad? Well, interstitial ad, I'll trigger from the ad icon. This is not an ideal method. You, I don't think, I think it's against the policy as well, but in this case, that's an, a test ad. I just wanna show the functioning behavior. Let's say I wanted to show my ad at the end of the game before the leaderboards. Well, I could call the same function that I'm gonna call right here when I click on the floating action button. Okay, so how would I do that? So I'm gonna go down to the on pressed um, function here and I wanna call my ad and how would I do that? So I'm gonna go back to the guide. It's a simple copy and paste. So I'm gonna copy this, go back to my guide and I'm gonna paste it in right where I say on pressed. And so this is just for an example. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this from the beginning just to make sure everything is wired up properly. I could hit hot reload at the lightning icon. In this case, I just went for the easy. Okay, so I'm gonna press on the trigger here and see, okay, there's my interstitial ad. Well, that was really easy to do and I can close my interstitial ad. So basically that concludes this episode on showing how to wire up a banner at the bottom with the margin and trigger an interstitial ad. So thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks on Flutter and I'll catch you later.